Thank you very much for joining us tonight for the Community Development Grants Open House. My name is Mallory Sullivan and I'm the Community Development Block Grant Administrator uh, in the Department of Planning and Community Development for the town. For a few logistics uh, for the Zoom meeting tonight, uh, everyone is on mute by default and there will be time um, later on in the open house for question and answer. If you have questions during the presentation, please feel free to put them in the chat and we'll make sure that they're answered in the Q&A. You can raise your hand by clicking the reactions button at the bottom of your screen and selecting the raise hand feature um, in the Q&A session. And this meeting is being recorded and will be available on the town's website afterward. Here's our agenda for the night. There are two parts. First, we will have an overview of the Community Development Block Grant Program um, with a special emphasis on its legacy in Arlington. Then we'll switch gears to talk about the CDBG application process. I think a lot of you are here tonight to hear about that. Um, and we'll take a look at the application itself. Before we get started though, um, and we're a, a pretty small group, but I would love to hear how familiar you are with the CDBG program. Um, and then also what your role is here tonight. Um, so there will be two poll questions and you can feel free to answer those when they pop up for you. Okay, we'll just give it another 10 seconds or so if you haven't had a chance to vote yet. Okay, so it looks like um, we have a quite a range of people here tonight who know from a, a little bit to a lot about CDBG, so that's great. Um, and then um, a variety of folks in attendance too, a few community members, um, individuals representing organizations and agencies, um, and some who are interested in applying for funding. So you're all in the right place and I'm glad you're here. Uh, so, Here's um, a little bit of information about the Community Development Block Grant Program. The program is administered by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, through a congressional appropriation that is made each year. Those appropriations are then divided amongst the states and counties and uh, localities, who then in turn uh, provide funds to address community needs. The primary objective of the CDBG program is to develop viable urban communities by providing decent housing and a suitable living environment and by expanding economic opportunities, principally for low and moderate income persons. That bottom section there is uh, in bold font. Um, I wanna call your attention to that. You'll see that quite a bit tonight, low and moderate income or LMI. And that's because, um, because this objective um, the CDBG program primarily serves individuals who earn incomes at or below 80% of the area median income. The area median income um, is adjusted each year, and if you're interested in seeing what those uh, current income rates are right now in Arlington, you can navigate to arlingtonma.gov slash CDBG, scroll all the way to the bottom of the page, and uh, you'll have an understanding there of um, who is eligible for CDBG funded programs based on income. Um, so Arlington has been an entitlement community since 1975. Its status as an entitlement community means that uh, we receive CDBG funding. In recent years, our grant has been about $1.1 million. And this is uh, divided uh, over a range of different projects and activities. 
the way these uh, projects are funded is through an application process. The Arlington Select Board has a CDBG subcommittee which reviews all of those applications and um, makes a recommendation to the Select Board, uh, which then um, later on in the springtime sends it to town meeting for endorsement before we then uh, provide it to HUD um, for final approval. Okay, uh, so projects in town are carried out by nonprofits as well as by town departments. Eligibility for CDBG funding for these projects is contingent upon alignment with a few different key goals, objectives, and priorities. Um, so these priority needs, goals, and objectives are all outlined in Arlington's five-year consolidated plan. And the consolidated plan is designed to help our community assess our affordable housing needs, um, as well as our community development needs, and then to make data-driven and place-based investment decisions. Arlington is part of what's called the North Suburban Consortium, which is uh, several communities in the region that receive funds from HUD. So we create a consolidated plan collaboratively with these other communities, uh, but we each community receives its own entitlement grant each year. And each year we take our priorities from our consolidated plan and create our own individual Arlington annual action plan. So as I had uh, initially mentioned, each project that applies for CDBG funding must meet a priority need, which are the five items that you see in the top row, housing, economic development, parks and infrastructure, public services, um, and planning and administration. Um, really, you can focus on the first four there. Planning and administration um, is set aside for the town's management and administration of the program. In addition to meeting one of these, uh, really the first four items on that list, which are quite broad, the project or the, um, the proposed project also needs to meet a national objective, which you see in that bottom row. And the most, uh, the most common one by far is meeting the low and moderate income beneficiary um, uh, national objective. So this can be met in a number of different ways. A project can meet that objective if it is located in a, in a certain area, so in a census tract that qualifies uh, for CDBG funding based upon the percentage of residents who qualify as low to moderate income. It can also be a public service uh, project that has a limited clientele, all of whom or majority of whom meet that LMI criteria. Um, it can also be housing or job creation or retention, again, focused on that qualifying group. Um, you'll see that slum blight and urgent need are also national objectives. Those are far less common. And if you did have a project that you were interested in um, to meet one of those goals, we would, um, we would, we could talk about that. So CDBG is really brought to life through our uh, grant recipients who use the, those funds to, uh, to meet a community need and to serve the community. So you'll see the Arlington Boys and Girls Club um, has been a subrecipient, a recipient of CDBG funds for quite some time. The photo that you see uh, beneath that description is from a, uh, a program that was facilitated during the pandemic. And that program uh, specifically uh, was open to students um, for after school homework support. It provided safe distancing, some social interaction. It also provided child care for uh, caretakers. Uh, the project itself was scholarships and the priority need it met is public services. And it was, the scholarships were specifically available to households qualifying on the low to moderate income limited clientele basis. In the center, you see the Housing Corporation of Arlington. You may have driven by the Downing Square development, um, which was uh, it, supported in part by CDBG for design costs. 
Uh, the priority need it meets is affordable housing. And again, it serves uh, limited clientele. All the way on the right is Wellington Park, um, which was supported in part by CDBG for ADA accessibility enhancements. So I hope that that gave you um, a little bit of information uh, more than you had before about CDBG and the types of projects that can be supported in Arlington. So now I would love to know, based on this brief overview, which of the consolidated plan goals would you like to see the town prioritize? So go ahead and answer that um, when the poll pops up for you. I think we have everyone. I'm gonna end Thank you. Okay, um, so it looks like um, majority said housing. Um, someone said parks and infrastructure and a few said public services. So um, thank you for sharing that. Um, something I didn't mention before was that in our current consolidated plan, housing is our number one priority. Um, many of you know, if not all of you, that it's a um, housing is a major issue, um, not only in Arlington, but regionally having sufficient housing and especially sufficient affordable housing. So um, that is certainly something that uh, CDBG wants to continue funding um, in addition to these other areas. So thank you for your, uh, for your input. Uh, so now we have some time for discussion. Um, in your input and your thoughts here are incredibly important in general to the CDBG process. Citizen participation um, is not only a HUD requirement, but it is uh, very helpful in terms of making our uh, annual action plan, uh, making sure that it reflects uh, community needs and uh, community input. So if you have any uh, responses to any of these questions, these are just um, to get the conversation going. I would uh, welcome you to raise your hand at this point, or if you have any other questions or thoughts, um, you can uh, raise your hand and uh, we'll call on you. You can also feel free to put your thoughts in the chat. Okay, I see Hannah O'Halloran. Um, you can go ahead. Yeah, I guess I'll jump in. Um, I work over at the Somerville Homeless Coalition and we cover the town of Arlington's um, homeless population as well. And um, so I selected housing as a priority for us. Um, I think it's kind of obvious why it would be a priority for us, but um, housing is definitely one of the answers to homelessness and more affordable housing. Um, you know, we have plenty of people with Section 8 vouchers coming down the pipeline, um, thanks to all the COVID funding out there. Um, but finding affordable units for people to rent in underneath the FMR has been really difficult. So um, that's why it's our priority. Thank you. Um, all right, and Jack, I see that your hand is raised. Go ahead. And, um, you know, coming from the Arlington Housing Authority, I mean, we have a obvious, I, I chose housing and, you know, it's it's something that we want to invest in further and any any additional means that we can get, whether it's through CDBG or otherwise, uh, will help us achieve some of our goals to maintain our housing portfolio and continue to provide those services for residents in the future. Great, thank you. Um, is there anyone else who's selected housing who would like to um, either react to what they've heard so far or contribute anything else? Okay. 
And how about anyone who responded? Oh, I see Joanne. Uh, go ahead. Um, hi, I'm Joanne Preston. I'm on the board of the Arlington Housing Authority. And I just had a few questions about um, your priorities within housing. Uh, do you uh, pay for the preservation of affordable housing as well as for the creation of affordable housing? And perhaps you're gonna do that at eight o'clock, but <laughs> what um, what's kinds of uh, amounts of funding do you give for? Do you have a certain one for each, like um, housing, economic development, a certain, is it, is it um, equally distributed between all of these or, well, I should let you talk about it. But. Thank you, those are, those are great questions. Um, I will start with the types of housing projects that you asked about. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, we primarily um, in recent years have supported uh, preservation projects. Um, our primary partner um, in, in recent years has been the Housing Corporation of Arlington, HCA. Um, and we have uh, so provided grants to support um, their capital improvements to their housing portfolio. So that has included um, a range of different improvements um, from um, doing exterior maintenance work um, to interior um, ADA accessibility components, such as um, making kitchens accessible or bathrooms. Um, so uh, CDBG cannot fund new development. Um, I did mention Downing Square, there are some um, uh, so for example, with Downing Square, we supported some of the uh, design and non-development costs. Um, so that was an eligible activity, um, but CDBG cannot fund uh, new construction yeah. of um, new housing. As far as the percentages of, uh, and actually I'll mention that uh, we are also uh, partnering with Caritas Community this year for capital improvements as well. Um, they're a new subrecipient this year. Um, as far as the percentages, the breakdown of how our overall million or so dollar grant is divided between the different uh, categories, uh, there are, there's, a, there's a bit of flexibility there. So public services um, and planning and administration are the only two with strict caps. Uh, for planning and administration, there's a cap of 20%. And for public services, um, there's a cap of 15% of our grant. So that means that public services does tend to be pretty competitive um, since it's a, a restricted amount. The remaining amount uh, can be divided uh, across any of housing, economic development and parks and infrastructure. Um, our consolidated plan does outline our uh, plan over the course of the five years. Um, so I would uh, encourage you to take a look at that if you're looking for um, uh, the specifics that, of how we plan to use our funds um, for the five-year period. Um, and with the consolidated plan, we're currently in the second year of that. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, Beth, I see your hand raised. Go ahead. Sorry, my name is Beth Locke. I'm with the um, Arlington Chamber of Commerce, and I apologize. The chat seems to be disabled. So I wasn't able to jump in on that and having some uh, audio issues here, obviously. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Thank you for letting yeah. me know. Um, so anyway, I'm sorry. I had joined the, um, the meeting late. And right when I joined, I noticed you had some percentages up. It looked like people had voted on priorities. Um, and I saw 0% for our economic development. So I would like to jump in and raise my hand and vote for economic development. Um, and I guess, you know, I'm not sure exactly what I missed, but if, if you could talk a little bit about um, how, what monies can be, you were talking about certain, certain caps and areas and how money could be applied in the area of economic development. I'd be very interested in that. Sure. Um, so 
there are a few different areas that uh, funds could be CDBG funds could be used for economic development. Um, and in fact, uh, during the pandemic, Arlington received a special allocation of funds uh, through, uh, through the CARES Act, and a significant amount of that went toward economic development programs. Uh, so those are exemplars of how CDB funds can be used. Um, so one of those was a micro enterprise support program. So this was for very small businesses with fewer than five employees um, and a business owner who, who uh, makes a low to moderate income. Those were direct assistance grants uh, for, the, for the businesses. Um, another way that uh, these funds can be used for economic development is through job creation and job retention. And specifically, um, these would be grant funds that are used to help a business support either the creation or the retention of a job that is held by a lower moderate income uh, individual. There are also uh, technical assistance um, for, for small businesses. Um, so for example, um, again, during the pandemic, we, we had a technical assistance program that supported small business owners with um, specifically with web-based uh, marketing, um, also with some developing business operations. So there's quite a variety. Um, uh, those are just a few examples um, from programs that we've had so far. Okay, and would there be any opportunity for projects that had to do with um, sort of downtown revitalization or more infrastructure type type projects? Um, infrastructure projects could potentially be eligible. Um, a lot of it would depend upon the location. If it's situated in um, an area that is uh, a census designated block group, um, eligible for CDBG funds. Um, but I would be interested uh, certainly in having discussion to kind of um, think about some ideas that mm -hmm. might be possible. Okay, all right, great, thank you. Thank you. Okay, if there are any other questions, um, please go ahead and raise your hand. All right, well, I don't see any more hand ra hands raised, so we will move on to the application overview. Um, so uh, who can apply for funding? Um, it will primarily be 501c3 nonprofit organizations. There are also select for-profit entities that can qualify for funding, as well as faith-based organizations units of government and institutions of higher education. So I believe that all, most, all of you are representing uh, organizations that fall within these categories. Um, this is an overview of the funding allocation process and the funding cycle. So as of today, we are in the application period. If you go online to our website, you will now see our application is posted there as well as our application guidelines. We'll also be taking a look at that in a few minutes. Um, so the application period does close on January 14th. From January through March is the application review uh, conducted by the CDBG subcommittee. In April, uh, we take our uh, budget to the select board, uh, which will then, um, if it is accepted, uh, move it to town meeting for endorsement. At that time, applicants are also notified of the status of their application. In May, we submit our annual action plan, which uh, includes all of our proposed projects and our budget for the year ahead to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. And then our program year kicks off on July 1st. Um, so our program year aligns with the town's fiscal year. Um, so for reference, you if you're applying for funds, uh, you would be applying for funding starting on July 1st, 2022, going through June 30th, 2023. Um, in the center is the grant review process, which um, uh, kind of discussed in the, with the funding cycle. Um, and then Arlington CDBG allocation, um, as I mentioned, our annual grant, we expect 
about a million dollars and um, divided amongst several different categories. Um, this again is a familiar slide. Just a reminder that any project must align with one of the consolidated plan priority needs and goals and with a national objective. And while there are a lot of kind of different pieces to this, the good news is that you don't need to memorize any of this. You will just need to select the one that best fits your project and your organization's work. Uh, so those organizations that receive grants are called subrecipients, and there are several key uh, requirements that subrecipients need to be mindful of. So there are several documentation requirements for program activities and expenses. This also includes uh, maintaining documentation that certifies the eligibility of uh, clients or those who are benefiting from the funds. This information is retained by your organization and is only provided to the town um, and later to HUD in uh, compiled format without identifying information. You also need to submit quarterly reports, which measure your outputs and outcomes against those that you identified on your application. The CDBG program is a reimbursement-based grant program, so you will submit invoices for reimbursement at at least on at least a quarterly basis. Um, and um, if your program had, um, for example, didn't start until wasn't scheduled to start until December. Um, or January, we would um, work individually on that. It's also a requirement to participate in monitoring with town staff um, as deemed necessary. This might include a site visit, it might include a review of documentation, um, but it's all necessary to ensure that the town is meeting HUD's requirements and that subrecipients are meeting HUD's requirements. And lastly, uh, if you're pursuing a construction project, there are additional compliance measures that subrecipients need to support um, when it comes to contracting uh, and subcontracting. And while there's a lot that goes into being a CDBG subrecipient, uh, the town um, and uh, myself in particular will work closely with you to make it as simple and straightforward as possible. Um, you see here we have a subrecipient manual which includes um, the requirements and the documentation um, and forms and everything necessary. Uh, if you're interested in taking a look at that, it's posted on the CDBG website, uh, webpage on the town website. So at this time, I would like to share with you the application for program year 48, which is our upcoming year. Um, let's see. Can somebody confirm that you can see this uh, document? We can see it. Great, thank you. Uh, so this is the application for the new program year. It starts out um, in part one with a lot of basic agency and project summary information. I'll call your attention to a few specific items that you'll uh, want to pay attention to. The first is the DUNS number. Um, some folks if haven't that haven't applied for federal assistance before may not have come across this. Um, it is a, a, a number that is required for all organizations receiving federal assistance. Um, it's a pretty easy online form. Um, I've heard some people get their numbers back within 15 minutes, others it can take a few weeks. So that's something that you might want to get started on sooner rather than later if you haven't, um, if you don't have that yet. Additionally, you'll wanna make sure that you're registered on SAM.gov, which is another requirement of, re of receiving federal assistance. If the project that you're proposing is being submitted on behalf of a collaborative, you'll want to put the primary or lead contact information up top and then include any collaborative partners on this line. I won't go through every single line since there is a lot to it. Um, I'll also note that there's a, as noted up here, an application guide that tells you exactly what you need to put in each box. 
This eligibility information will be familiar as these are all of the national objectives um, that were discussed on an earlier slide. We do request beneficiary information with your application and these are estimates on the number of either individuals um, or households that you plan to support through your program. The project summary is just that. We'll, we look for an elevator pitch of your project. If you're a returning applicant, some reflection on the past year, um, and then a performance evaluation plan so we can get an idea of what measures you are using to uh, track the progress of your plan and what you would do if uh, goals aren't quite being met. If you're a returning applicant, and I know there are a few in the audience tonight, um, you'll notice that this is new. We're asking you to identify which town of Arlington goals your project is advancing. And what's listed here are several key plans that uh, are current for the town. You can click on any one of those. Those are hyperlinks um, and they'll take you to the respective plan. And you can just provide um, a quick sentence on which goals, strategies, um, your project is helping to advance. Again, something familiar, the consolidated plan goals and objectives. Um, and last in this section is the attachments. So we'll need a copy of your IRS letter uh, showing that you're a 501c3 nonprofit, um, a copy of the agency's most recent financial audit, and then a, a copy of the agency's Massachusetts Certificate of Good Standing, which can be obtained from the Mass Department of Revenue if you need it. It's also optional to submit other letters of support or other program materials that you would think would help your application. Part two is the budget. So either part A or part B in this uh, section needs to be completed depending upon the type of project. And this is where we ask you to get um, pretty specific with your budget. Um, so this shouldn't simply be one line item with the overall budget for the entire project or activity. Um, it should include the different components, whether it's supplies, um, uh, staff time, uh, rental space, space, rental space costs, um, anything here. There's a column for CDBG funds, for other funding, um, and for your total proposed budget. If you do fill out something in column B, we ask that you explain that in section C, whether it's another uh, a local grant, state, uh, private grant. Um, we'll note that leveraging is uh, looked upon quite favorably with CDBG. So if your project um, has other support, um, that's great and we wanna know about it. So be sure to tell us about it in this section. Now I'll move on to part three, our project narrative table. And this is where you can show us how you get from the, the community need that Arlington is facing all the way to through what it looks like when that, uh, when that need is addressed, the outcomes. So this is a big kind of empty page, but again, this is where I highly recommend going to the application guide and either going there or hovering over each of the boxes, you'll see a prompt for what specific information we're looking for with each of these, um, each of these lines on the table from the need, to the goal, so what the, what the purpose of the project is, the inputs, uh, what staff uh, capacity, institutional knowledge, other um, funding sources, space, what, um, what you'll be using in order to do your activities. And this is um, the, the core of your project. What are you proposing to do to, uh, to uh, address that need? And then we have outputs, which are um, a, a more numeric in nature, um, what it looks like when that project occurs down to your outcomes, which are the um, uh, more significant 
uh, products of your project. Oh. And you probably maybe digested that a little bit, but not fully. Um, but I think the natural next question is probably, how is the application evaluated? So again, you'll, you'll recognize that um, in that green checkbox next to it is that the application or the proposed project meets a consolidated plan priority need and national objective. Um, projects that do not achieve these two benchmarks uh, cannot be considered for CDBG funding. Um, they won't meet HUD's criteria. The next five check marks there in blue are the five main criteria that the subcommittee will use to evaluate your application. There are also three additional bonus points possible um, for a new uh, partnerships that are being proposed, a new service that's being offered, or evidence of uh, being able to demonstrate self-sustainability within three years. Um, and the uh, more information on each of these is available in the application guide on the final page where you'll find a rubric. Um, very briefly, because we've already uh, talked about the, the timeline and the funding cycle a bit, um, as I mentioned, applications are due in January. Um, there will be several public hearings throughout the winter and spring, um, as well as deliberations by the subcommittee um, in order to make, form a budget. Um, the recommendations will be presented to the select board um, and then later to town meeting for endorsement applicants will be notified of their status in the spring and program year 48 will begin on July 1st of 2022. So that was a lot of information, but um, at this time, if there are questions about the application process, about the application, I'm happy to switch screens again so you can um, take a look at the application again. Um, so go ahead and raise your hand if you do have any questions. Marianne, I see that your hand is raised. Go ahead. Yeah, hi, thank you. Um, I have a question about the budgeting piece. So um, <clears throat> I'm new to this process, so bear with me. Bear with me. So um, you, you have a million dollars that you get, and let's say one of the people on this call needs a million dollars. Um, in our budgeting, would we put exactly what we need? Or would we, in our minds, prorate it with the idea that, well, you only have a million dollars, so why don't we just ask for 200,000? Or should we ask for everything we need? And then you would make the determination of how much you would give. Uh, that's a great question. Um, it could go either way. It's, I would say it's pretty unlikely that we would fund um, one project with the majority of our of our grant, just knowing that um, there are a lot of different needs in town. Um, so I'd say that the some of the key things that we would be looking for would be um, is this budget is this budget realistic? Has it been um, created with some research in mind? Um, two, are there other sources that are contributing to the budget, or is CDBG um, the only source of funding for it? Um, so I think that's a situation um, where, uh, especially if it was a new, a brand new applicant, we would definitely want to work with you to uh, to help you refine the project and um, you know help you give it as best a chance as possible in order to um, uh, to be reviewed well by the by the subcommittee. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Um, Jack, I see that your hand is raised. Go ahead. So, so the question I have is, so the state allots us a certain amount of capital funding on an annual basis, and they call it formula funding. Um, would that be considered a, a leveraged source of funding in, in regards to CB, CDBG? Definitely, yes. Okay. So pretty much any funding, it could be our, you know, operating, um, it, it could be any type of funding as long as we have an outside source of funding. Yes, if it's, um, and I should clarify, if it's intended to be used for the project, um, yeah. if it's operating, um, if it's, you know, for example, covering staff time on that project, then that might be um, where it would be considered 
leveraged. Okay. And then and the other question I had, which, um, so for the 501c3, um, I, I don't think that applies to, to us. Um, I, I have to, to look into that a little bit more because that's that's for a nonprofit, correct? So um, I'm what what type of, I mean, I could talk to you about that later. I think that's a little bit, maybe being a little bit nitpicky, but I, I can talk to you about that later. Yes, so there are, um, yes, of course, other forms of nonprofits and um, that the housing authority would be eligible. Yeah. Perfect, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, are there any other ap uh, application related questions or um, any questions pertaining to the CDBG program in town? Okay, well, um, if there aren't additional questions at this time, thank you very much for attending. Um, I do wanna make just a couple quick uh, announcements or, or notices. If you have questions as you're putting your program together, um, as you're putting your application together, please feel free to uh, send me an email at any time. We can schedule a call or a Zoom session um, to talk through any of your questions. Um, in addition, if you're an Arlington resident and you are inspired by this presentation and are interested in serving on the CDBG subcommittee, we do have two openings for resident members um, and the application is on the town website on the uh, committee openings page. So I would encourage you to take a look at that if you're interested. Um, I'll stick around for a few more minutes um, if you have a question you wanted to ask one-on-one, -on -one, but otherwise, thank you very much for joining tonight. Um, and have a good evening.